in this video, we will be covering all the important information provided in the fourth chapter of class 6th NCRT, that is, sorting materials into groups. Video start karne se pehle, you must get an idea of what we shall be covering in this video. We will start with what objects and materials are. We will cover what exactly do we mean by properties of materials and how diversity in those properties are useful. And finally, we will be dealing with the individual properties themselves, that is appearance, hardness, solubility and transparency. Please make sure that you watch the video till the end, taki kuch bhi miss na ho. So whatever we see around ourselves, jo bhi cheeze tangible hain, they are all objects. They are everywhere we look around. So many of them. From chairs, furniture, clothes, cars, aeroplane, diamond rings, the list goes on and on and on. But ye sari cheeze aakhir banti kin cheezo se hai. These objects are made up of different materials. In materials ki bhi list is seemingly endless. There are so many different materials, such as wood, soil, iron, copper, fabrics, etc. etc. So these objects are made up of materials. Ye baat apni pakki hai. Now, if you look closely, it can be observed that there are some objects that are made up of only one type of material. Saath hi, kuch aisi cheeze hain, jo ek se zyada material se banai gai hain. For example, a chair. Now, a chair can either be made from only wood or it can be made from a metal which may have other parts made from fabrics. So, in the latter case, we used more than one material to make the same chair. Now, with materials also, we have a very similar observation. With the same material, one or more objects can be made. For example, glasses are used to make so many different objects. Cutlery, vanity mirrors, stuffing glasses that are used in so many different applications across industries. So, what is the factor which makes all of this possible? The variety of objects that we have, what makes them possible? The distinct and numerous properties of materials. Now, let us explore these properties in a little more detail. The most interesting aspect about these properties is their diversity. This diversified nature of the materials makes it possible to make objects to suit our needs. Needs which are ever increasing with our advancement as a society. So, choice of material depend karega is baat pe ki object jo hum us material ko use karke banayenge, us object ka purpose kya hai, usko banane ka uddeshya kya hai. For example, for cooking we will need a material that is strong enough to contain the contents and the high temperature as well, such as steel, aluminium, etc. So, for making any object, one needs to first identify the purpose of the object and secondly, a suitable material with the desired qualities. Therefore, the study of various properties of materials becomes critically important. This chapter outlines four properties of materials, appearance, hardness, solubility and transparency. Based on the extent up to which these characteristics are present in a certain material, its applications are determined. Let's deal with the appearance first of all. Appearance ka matlab hota hai, koi material dekhne mein kaisa hai. Ab materials dekhne mein ek dousre se kafi alag hote hai. This is due to their intrinsic makeup. For example, wood looks very different from iron or other such metals. Then there are some materials which are quite similar in appearance, such as iron, copper, aluminium, gold, etc. What is common in such metals is luster. Luster ka matlab hota hai chamak. Most of the metals which you see are comparably shiny. Another thing you should note is that this luster withers away when these metals are exposed to air and moisture for a prolonged period of time. We will analyze this aspect in great detail in the coming chapters. Next property is hardness. This is about the strength of materials. Alag alag materials ki strength alag alag hoti hai. Soft materials ko asani se scratch ya fir compress kar sakte hain. For example, cotton. Wahin hard metals ko asani se scratch ya compress nahi kiya ja sakta. For example, wood, iron and other such materials. So, solubility is what we have next. Solubility refers to the ability to be dissolved in any liquid in general. Herein, we are only dealing with solubility of materials in water. So, something that will dissolve in water is called soluble and if it does not, then it is called insoluble in water. You should know that water dissolves more substances than any other liquid. That's why it is also known as the universal solvent. And due to this property only, it is so essential for the survival of human body. We cannot survive without water even for a couple of days. We covered the role of water as a nutrient in the second video of this class 6 science NCRT video series. 
you must watch that video dealing with various components of food in case you have missed it. Further, there are various kinds of substances that are found to be water soluble. Examples of some solids that dissolve in water are salt, sugar, coffee, etc. Vinegar and methanol are such liquids that are water soluble. There are gases also that are found to be soluble in water. Oxygen and CO2 are examples of such gases. Now we know that materials that are able to get dissolved into water are called insoluble. At times, we see that such materials end up floating on the surface of water as well. The underlying reasons are effects like buoyancy and phenomenon like density. We will deal with these topics under relevant topics and chapters later. Next we have is transparency. This relates to the property of a material which allows or disallows light to pass through it and up to what extent. Now, every material is different in its composition. So they behave differently when they are exposed to light. Now see, if a material will allow light to pass through it completely, we will be able to see clearly through the material. And in view of this particular ability of the materials alone, they are classified into three types. Let's look at them one by one. First type is transparent. Now these materials let the light pass through themselves completely. This allows us to look clearly through such materials. For example, the glass windows that we find in our homes or offices. Since they are transparent, we are able to see clearly through them. The second type is translucent. They allow the light to pass through but only partially. That's the reason we are able to see through the translucent objects but not very clearly. Example is frosted glass that are usually found in bathrooms. Lastly, we have opaque objects. Such objects block the light completely and that is the reason we cannot see through these objects. Examples can be wooden objects, metallic objects, clothes, etc. So friends, we have come to the end of the chapter here. Now that we have studied various properties of materials, we are in a better position to understand the breadth in the variety of materials. Reason being the distinct characteristic properties of the materials. That's the reason it is important to group these vast number of materials in view of their similarities and differences. This helps us in studying and using such materials in a better and an optimized way.